There we go, that's working. Welcome to the stream. I thought I'd come on and go live, do a little bit of listing. Um, I don't know if anybody's about to come and join me live. Um, if any of the YouTubers are watching, let me know. I can drop you an invite. You can pop in and keep me company. Um, I'm listing car parts, as the title says. If you are new here, if you're new to the channel, and we've had a shed load of new subs over the last couple of days, I mean about a 1,000 um, in the last couple of days. It's all gone a bit nuts. Uh, you may not know the story of these car parts, so I thought as a little introduction to what I'm doing, I'd explain where all of this stuff came from. Um, it was about a year ago. Um, we found out that a local Hyundai dealership service center had gone bust and they were selling up all of their stock. So um, and they were doing it on site here where I live in Hitchin. So we went down and I walked into the parts store, which was about as big as our house. And there were racks like this, rows and rows of racks just covered in car parts. Um, like so. I mean, from this size right the way up to great big boxes with whole light clusters in and all the way down to nuts and bolts and little things. So um, I made a decision when I walked in that place, that I was going to own it all. And I very nearly bought everything. A couple of lots we lost out on, but the vast majority we bought. Um, the investment was can't remember offhand everything we bought cost us bear with uh 1438 pounds i'm keeping track in here that how how old school am i pen and paper um of net profit after fees and postage and we are at uh, we've made in profit eleven and a half thousand pounds so far, but I kind of stopped listing it last year um, And I'm just getting back into it. I've listed about half of it probably sold about a quarter of it So it was a cracking deal. So anyway um, Been listing car parts again for the last couple of days I, I photographed a mountain of it. I listed a load yesterday and I'm trying to do a few today. So um, Yeah I thought I'd come on. Hopefully, you can keep me company. Really, it's not going to be very exciting. Um, so let's see who's in. Wow, hello. Uh, Rod was first in. I was chatting to Rod earlier. That's Pommy Pickers down in Australia. Do the quiz now. I may stand a chance. There's a, there's no quiz. This this is this is work. Okay. Hopefully, I might get something done. So hello everyone. Game Master Bear Bear James Moore. Connor, Dylan, Hurricane, Nadine, George. I was in George's live stream uh, about half an hour ago. Um, another George, George F. Hi, Kirsten. Misfit Moments, Nadine, Karin. Still sick in bed. Oh, man. That's awful. So no one wants to see this. Well, <laughs> you can come on if you like. Entirely up to you um james moore says caught your new banner just then low impact lifestyle sounds like a keep fit regime a few people have said that it's a thing it's about low impact on the environment um which andrew is super keen on being vegan and all of that so that's what it means we're not breaking out into keep fit um so yeah get well soon karen um Right, let's see. If anyone does want to pop in, you are welcome. Just let me know and I'll try and get a link to you. Bargain Buster, how many do you reckon you will list or will you get distracted? I'll probably get distracted, but I haven't been too efficient today anyway, so it's not going to get any worse. Right. Oh, yeah, my new shirt, EA, EA Gauss. This was the shirt that I shared uh, the other day that I ordered. I, I've, been, I've been listening to Radiohead all day today. Totally in love with them at the moment. And Tom York solo stuff. Probably more than Radiohead I'm listening to at the minute. <laughs> I 
Sounds like grounds for a divorce, vegan. Well, Andrea's been vegetarian since I knew since I met her in the 90s. She's been vegan for the last, I don't know, five, six, seven years, long time. My daughter's vegetarian. It's up to them. I don't mind. I'm still I still eat pretty much anything, but there's not a whole lot of meat that gets cooked in this house for obvious reasons. Kirsten's finishing off accounts. I've got a load of accounts that need doing. I was thinking though, I'm going to do last year's accounts early, like now, and get it out of the way. I'm I'm normally a last minute kind of guy. Yeah. Have you checked out the prices of the tarot cards? No. A couple are expensive and rare. Cool. I might do a little video and just um, research those live. Then that could be really interesting. I haven't had a chance to look at it. Look at those yet. Oh, George will join. Ah. I can try if I send you a link on Messenger, George. See if you can make it work. It should work on the phone, I think. Let me see if I can find you on here. Yeah, so plan is I'm going to list a few bits and hopefully um be entertaining i'm not sure how entertaining listing car parts is we need we need people in don't we to to make this more entertaining than me sat here on my own okay let's message george okay so the link should be on your messenger now right glenn says he's too busy binge watching this channel should be at the charity shops well we've had so many new subs i was going to talk briefly about that um i put a video out a week or so back of a little um retail arbitrage deal i picked up those little sellotape things and for whatever reason and i have no idea why that video has Kind of gone viral but it has um earlier i looked the numbers on the actual video are, are quite a way behind but currently it's a fraction below a hundred thousand views on that video alone and that video has brought the channel an extra like thousand subs in the last couple of days so it's been a huge knock-on effect on the channel because people are finding the channel and binge watching stuff and browsing around so yeah it's been bonkers the channel's been getting about 2000 views an hour which is totally unprecedented so if you are new welcome um hi paul uh question did you have any issues applying for royal mail business account waiting for a reply from them so long ago i can't really remember i do remember doing it over the phone um hey george I'm on. He's on. <laughs> Hello. <laughs> How are you, mate? Good, folks. Just had to install everything then. <laughs> but I think oh, right. I'm okay. Here. So you have to install an app on your phone or something? It was just um, Google Hangouts. I yeah. uninstalled it, so I just had to install it again. That was all. Cool. Used to be working. Um, I was just answering a question. Yeah, so applying for a Royal Mail business account. Um, I'd ring them up and see if they can speed it along for you. I'm sure that's how I got mine set up was over the phone. But it's all changed these days. It's all click and drop and drop and go and God knows what. Do you have a, a Royal Mail account, George? No, I just use um, Parcel to Go mostly. Oh, okay. Yeah. Auto uploads to Parcel to Go. Then you just do the um, dimensions and wait and then choose from there, yeah. So what most things go by Hermes then? Is that the cheapest on there? Um, I try and avoid Hermes if I can. Uh, mostly, um, what's it called? In post, the lockers. I don't know if you saw my video. You scan it and you can put them in the lockers and lock them. And they do next day delivery or 48 hour. Okay. And then, yeah, UPS, uh, DPD. I suppose you do a lot more bulky stuff than i do a lot of my stuff will go in an envelope and chuck it in the post so yeah i rarely get envelope sized things <laughs> yeah 
You're all about the big stuff. Did you see my big thing from Sunday? I haven't video? caught up on videos. No, what was that? I'm not on a video. I put a Instagram picture on. I got a post office sign. <laughs> oh, I did the, see that. I did see yeah. the dolly with it on. Yeah, that was so that's random. In, that's in the kitchen in a minute. That'll be. I'm picturing at the moment. I'll get that in a minute. <laughs> that's crazy. Couldn't say no for fifteen quid. <laughs> So is that a kind of make up a price item, really? I doubt there's any completed on that sort of thing. Well, there is actually. Probably there... 75, 85, maybe, plus post, yeah. <laughs> so, how do you reckon they, what did they change their logo or something or change all their signage? Why would there loads, be loads of them right. knocking about? Just closing down, aren't they? Post offices quite often. Right. They take everything down and then I buy them. <laughs> nice. I've had quite a few shop displays and signs. Yeah, it's a good it's a good market. There's always someone that, I mean, God knows what they use it for unless they just collect it. I think it's like man cave items, mainly. Yeah. yeah. Right. So I can't see I, the chat, so I have to get up on my iPad. <laughs> okay. Right. I am determined I'm going to get some stuff listed whilst doing this. <laughs> Um, let me just quickly check in the chat if anyone else is trying to get my attention. Uh, Pommy Pickers, uh, George, I see Soldier Granny Trolley. Yeah, that went straight away. <laughs> oh, the Sholly trolley. trolley. Yeah, I listed that. Um, when was that? Six in the morning. I've been getting up listing in bed, and that sold that evening. No. They soon go, Sholly Trolleys, yeah. <laughs> Oh, I'm interrupting Karen's um, busy afternoon of eating milk tray and reading. Sorry, Karen. You don't have to watch. Hi from the Philippines. Wow. The daily life of a lonely man. <laughs> that kind of sums me up today. Really, I've been sat here listening to our parts. Um, Okay, I can't see anyone else saying they're wanting to join. So, right, let's open eBay. Have you had a knock on the door from the tax man yet, Nick? <laughs> no, it's funny how people watching that video, obviously new to the channel, they make the assumption that I'm not tax registered and ta paying tax. Oh. And like a few people have said uh, in my defense on that video, why on earth would I be putting myself out there on the yeah. internet if I'm not business registered and paying tax? So I've replied to a few and said, yes, thank you very much. I've been registered yeah. in business since 2002. I pay my more than my fair share of tax. Thank you very much. Yeah. It's weird. Well, if you have a comment, it's a little dig at you. You've done really good. So just have a little dig at you just to bring you back down again. <laughs> oh, people love it. They can say what they want. Yeah. <laughs> and they're welcome to it. If they get abusive, I'll just delete it, which is fine. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, I've never had a video go that crazy. Bond. Yeah, um, I got it up now, 91,000 now. Yeah, and that's quite a lot behind the actual numbers. I think it's it's ah. a fraction of 100 now. Um, I can't get into the analytics right now, but actually yeah. maybe I can. Let's have a look. No, I can't be bothered. I'll have a look later. <laughs> Is that I've your got... kids I can hear in the background? Uh, my children and one extra today. <laughs> I've got a friend around. Cool. I'm on my own for, to defend for myself. The wife's at work. <laughs> right. So this is about as exciting as it gets. I've got a set of spark plug leads. This is, got, what you, this is what you tuned in for. <laughs> Dr. Martin's here at the moment. Well, you're going to show me up with all your cool stuff now, aren't you? <laughs> Uh, be careful then. But my stuff owes me about 50p an item. Beat that. Uh, <laughs> these owe me 12. They're vintage, Dr. Martins, though. Okay. Oh, you're lying. Hello. <laughs> say hello. No, she's the quiet one. Oh, I, say I, was, I was snubbed. <laughs> snubbed live on the internet. <laughs> if the older one comes in, she won't shut up. <laughs> <laughs> right, let's see what we've got here. Well, hopefully when I punch in the, car the part number, it'll bring up a load of completeds and I can work off that. 
if I can't find mm. any, it's really complicated to work out any idea of pricing on this stuff. <laughs> Can be an advantage, but a disadvantage at the same time. It's really hit and miss. It's like the more obscure they are, that can mean they're really valuable because you're the only person with it, or it just means yeah. nobody wants it at all. Yeah. And it's hard to work that out sometimes. Yeah. So I do the usual aim high and come down sort of. That's not that Rupert Bear, though. For me last year, I didn't have a clue. All I knew is um, he owed me 50 quid. And I just, I thought I'd aim 350. And as I was listing it, I thought, oh, I'll try five. And it just kept going up and up and up. I think I listed it for 995 in the end and then got 750. <laughs> I think we have similar sort of uh, methods because when I listed that accordion, I, I was going to go about 200, 250. And by the time I'd done the pictures, written the listing, it was on at 450. And then <laughs> within a week. But it came back, as you know, which was a pain. Did you get it back safely? Yeah, it's back. It's relisted. Uh, not yeah. sold it again yet, which sucks. <laughs> there you go. The joy sold once, it'll go again. Yeah, it'll go. Hopefully. Whether I get that high price again is another question. Yeah. Okay. Sorry? I've got quite a big return on its way back. I sold a, um, it's, um, I can't remember what it's called now. It's like a tiny cassette, um, DAT, digital analog tape or something, player. I got nearly £300 for it, but they got it and it stopped working half an hour in. <laughs> oh, man, that sucks. Yeah. Do you um, mark your items or do anything like that? Or did you take a picture of the serial number? Oh, yeah, I do. Um, I put it on the listing as well, the serial number, all the information at the back of it. Yeah, so I know it's definitely mine. Cool. But it seemed genuine, but um, it's just a pain in the butt. <laughs> it's it's part of it, really. If you can't handle returns, it's not the game to be in this, is it? Yeah. Um, I can't actually see the chat, guys, at the minute because I'm researching on eBay. Let me just move that across. And my lights just died to me as well. You run out of battery. Yeah, I've got the batteries, but they've just died to me, so I've got to get the uh, adapters from now. Oh, Edward, <laughs> I need to contact you, Edward. We'll make a date to um, to do that live hangout again. Okay. Um, just seeing if anyone else is wanting to pop in. Uh, question more being nosy really this is bc you don't have to answer if a video was viewed a hundred thousand times or was monetized what would you likely make as a result depends on a lot of factors really mainly how many ads it's got running or whether it's got ads running at all um i'll be able to tell you that because ad revenue you see like two or three days later that comes in so i can't tell you at the moment but yeah, I should earn a fair bit from that. That's way beyond what my normal videos will be viewed. So it'll be interesting <laughs> to see. You can give up this reselling malarkey stuff, can't you? Off that video? <laughs> Off that one, I wish. I wish it was oh. that good. <laughs> I was saying in my live, um, I just passed the threshold for adverts. They're just reviewing it. But I'm already minus. Sort of, I've spent way too much on this setup to do videos already. <laughs> Yeah, I, t I took ages and ages to even invest in anything for the channel. It must have been like two years in. <laughs> yeah. But the GoPro alone was 300 on its own. I shouldn't have spent that much, but I couldn't help it. <laughs> wow, really? My little um, GoPro session was £70 used, I think. And this is the latest one, the 7 Hero Black or something. But then for the adapter or for the microphone, you have to buy this adapter and that's 50 quid on its own. So that's another 50. Then also, uh, I've lost it now. The dual battery charger, that's another 50 quid. Because I keep running out of battery when I've got the boot sales. <laughs> wow. Yeah. I tell you, that's one thing I've been amazed at with the little uh, little cube one I've got. 
um, the session is the battery lasts forever on it. Oh, really? Yeah. Yeah, I do. When I do my boot sales, like, um, it's a hundred percent. And then by the time I'm at my unit and finish the video, I'm lucky if I've got 10% mm. left. <laughs> That's not good, is it? No, there is a tiny battery and it's, uh, I've got it on like full resolution and everything. So it is working hard when I'm filming. But yeah. Okay. Right. Oops. Sorry. Oh, BC says, thanks for answering that. You didn't have to. You deserve every penny you make from this channel. It's a god thing. Thank you. It's been a long road to get here, put it that way. And that, that video will die down. It'll all go back to normal, no doubt. I think, so. Yeah, it's probably been suggested in like, people's YouTube like, side bars, whatever it is. I think so. Apparently, it's been shared around on a lot of Facebook groups. Um, ah like um, retail arbitrage groups and uh fba groups and things which has helped and then somehow it's triggered yeah being yeah. recommended by youtube which is cool um yeah edward drop me a message uh, if you remember if not i'll do it later and we'll arrange a time to do that video together soon um, Alan's asked me, I will list something, honestly, in a minute. Alan asks, uh, Nick, where do you normally find car parts to sell? I normally don't. Um, I said during the, the little intro to this video, if you're new to the channel, I bought, well, me and the wife bought out a dealership, a high-end dealership. Um, we bought, I don't know how many thousands of car parts at auction about a year ago, and I've been selling them off ever since. It's one of the best deals we ever, ever picked up. I paid, I can't remember, I did share it before. What's it? We paid a total of 1,438 and we are in profit to the tune of 11,000, 11 and a half thousand. And that's about a month out of date. So it's probably near 12 or 13,000. And we haven't lifted half of them yet. Not bad. Not bad. They don't come along very often. No. Nah. Okay, so I did find some of these leads. Looks like they're worth about 15 pounds by the look of it, I think I'll go for. Same make. All right. There we go. Okay, so hard to know if parts are the same if they don't list the part number. Kia Picanto. Oh, I just saw Zaheer in there. Welcome to Hop On Zaheer. He's in his big fancy office now, isn't he? Oh, I know. He's, <laughs> he'll be working hard. He won't have to do YouTube. Pencil pushes. <laughs> <laughs> Stinking the office out with KFC, probably. <laughs> <laughs> right, is that the same part? 27501. Zero two D double A. Right, I'm going to go twenty quid because I think these will be worth more because they're official high end die. So genuine high end die. I'll pitch the rest of their title. Here we go. Post office, anyone? <laughs> wow, that's cool. I don't know if it'll fit in my uh, 
Hello, it might just fit. There we go. <laughs> Post office of Bow. I think that was in London when I was uh, researching it. Yeah. So did you get the story behind it off the seller at all? Did you ask him or her? Uh, no, I think it was... Um, oops. I'm back. Um, can you hear me? Yeah, yeah. So someone just tried to call me on my phone. Then, um, yeah, oh. it was just like a house clearance type guy, and um, he just removed it himself. That's all he said, really. So oh, I don't really know. The post office. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I removed it myself in the middle of the night. <laughs> yeah. Imagine if it was nicked and somebody found it on your on your eBay. <laughs> I'd be like that time the police turned up to his door because he had that stab vest. Yeah, the vest, yeah. Yeah. It touched I haven't had anything stolen as yet. <laughs> when we used to have the high street uh, gaming shop, we had issues with people fencing stolen stuff to us. So we, we ended up working alongside the police. Um, we yeah. used to have names and faces and stuff to look out for and... We set up a sting once on a burglar, and it was it's cool. Oh wow! Yeah, yeah. I watch um, Craigslist Hunter, and um, he was saying in his recent chat about um, obviously buying stolen stuff, and he loses out on the money and the merchandise and everything. <coughs> and then he has to push planes through and everything. Sounds like a <coughs> pain. Yeah, well, how it worked with us, uh, there was one time where all of the stock was seized and went as part of evidence, and then we had to make a claim to try and get it back. Yeah. Um, which we did. It just took forever because it had to stay. Whilst the court case was going on, it had to stay as evidence and stuff. Yeah. There was one time I was meant to give evidence in court, and it went on for years. I mean, literally years. Ah. Um, and I never had to give evidence in the end, but the guy was sent down. He admitted to a whole string of burglaries and all sorts. Ah. But I didn't have to go to court. Good. Yeah. Okay. That's that one done. I'll go here, Wood, but he has no webcam at the office. Fair enough. <laughs> Question, how do you both record your eBay items? Do you keep a list of everything you pick up and update it when it sells? I keep a record of what I buy for tax, um, and then I keep a record of my income. I don't track each individual item. There's no point, really. Same, really. Uh, did you start using the QuickBooks app? Um, Andrea's got it on her phone. What what we wanted from it was one account that we could both use on our phones. Yeah. It doesn't seem to offer that. Oh, really? Oh. Um, so I'm not sure we're going to carry on with it. I don't know yet. We're, we're kind of toying with it at the minute. Yeah. It's made my life so much easier. This is the first yeah. year I've used it. And it's, I, yeah. I, got I, love, I love the thought of it. I'm not sure it's going to work for us at the minute. Yeah. Um, someone's asking how much are you going to sell the post office sign for? Have you got a price for that? Uh, I have, but it'll probably change. <laughs> I'll probably list that sort of one, two, five, but I'll probably end up getting 85, 75 maybe. Yeah. All depends how I feel when I list it. <laughs> 
That's interesting. Owly Boy says, Nick, do you know anything about the option on eBay to reduce the price incrementally over certain time frames? I hadn't seen that. That no. sounds interesting. Hi, Heather. How are you? Hi, Heather. Okay, right. I'll keep getting distracted. <laughs> <laughs> Right, let's get this listing done. So, genuine Hyundai Ignition HT lead set, Kia Picanto and Hyundai i10 gets Atos Amica. That will do. Uh, part numbers are in. I'm going to go 20 quid. One available. I'm getting down to the car parts where I've only got one of each. It's so time consuming compared to like when I had 50 of a certain oil filter and yeah, that was so, oh, it's so easy. I really have that luxury. Yeah, it's great. And then it just sits there. It doesn't matter if it takes a year to sell off one listing, five minutes work. And it's like... I had them bop it pens. I had 200 of them, but then a guy bought the rest of them from me, which was handy. Oh yeah. How much did you get for that job lot then? Uh, I originally bought them for uh, £400, sold uh, sort of a dozen between 25 and 35 over Christmas, and then they sort of tanked off after the new year, and then I got, um, what was it now? Um, can't think off the top of my head. I think it was something like 1500 for the rest. Wow. And it was only sort of 20 minute car drive away from me. So I dropped them off in person as well. <laughs> That's crazy. The 400 into nearly two grand, which is, that was my biggest sale, like all together. Yeah. Good stuff. But now it's all one list in items. It's a pain, but keeps it interesting. So how I tend to list for those of you that are vaguely interested, I will, as you just seen, do research on the uh, Mac here at my desktop, um, draft the listing, save the draft, and then I've already pre-taken the photographs of all of these. I had a mountain of it the other day, um, getting through most of it now. Then I'll go into the draft on my phone and find the pictures, which is not always easy. And drop them in from the phone. Right, here they are. So it's that one, that one, that one. We'll add those. Dink. Dink. And dink. And then I go back in on here, do any adjustments that are necessary, and kick it off. Yeah, I've listed a whole one thing whilst live. <laughs> I've pictured... Oh, one second, someone's at the door. <laughs> right, so... List. Hi, Elmo, how are you doing? So, that is done. Let's find something a little bit different. What we got? Ah, these. These are a little bit. They're not car parts, but they came from the same haul. You may remember we bought the stationary cupboard. I listed everything from that stationary cupboard ages ago. Well, I thought I did, but I found a box full of these. Documents enclosed envelopes. There's a full box of, well, you know, the little things that stick on the outside of courier parcels. It's a full box of a thousand. I would imagine they're not worth a lot, but we shall see. So, what do you call these things? Document envelopes. Document, well, Document enclosed envelopes. 
enclosed a wallet. So they're calling them on here. So let's see what a thousand of these are worth. Um, <laughs> All right, let me screen share. Do, do, do. So I doubt there's much in it. If I go into sold. Um, oh, Edwards just said, okay, it's home time for me. Going to say goodbye to all. Nick will do that film next week if you're free. Yes, that will work. Hope Andrea and the family are all okay. Catch up with you later. Perfect. Yeah, I'll, I'll message you soon and we'll sort that out. So let's have a look then. Oh, so these are multi different quantities you can buy from these people. Let's see how much they're charging for a thousand amount. One thousand size. Uh, these are A6, I believe. Fifteen ninety nine free. Okay, so they're doing a thousand at fifteen ninety nine free. Oh, everyone's doing them with all different quantities available. Let's just dip in another one. See if it's somewhere near. I'll probably do fifteen pound free shipping. Sounds about right. All this stuff and that um, haul owes me nothing, so. Amount thousand fifteen forty nine. Yeah, okay. I will click through from here, sell it yourself. Oh, those are plain ones. Mine have got the wording on documents enclosed, wallets, envelopes. Um, a six. I'm sure this is a six size. That's a four. I'm back. <laughs> yeah. Oh. Anything exciting? No, just uh, I'm down one child now. So bonus. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> the friend got picked up. That was all. <laughs> Two more to get rid of. <laughs> no. Get rid of. Oh. <laughs> Meaning. Oh, here's a noisy one. I am not noisy. Yes, you are. No, I'm not. Yes, you are. Let's start her off. God. <laughs> She's nine going on 19. Hmm. It's against the eBay policies to list children, apparently. Oh, have you tried? Oh, yeah. <laughs> 18 by 13. Did I miss anything exciting? Oh, yeah, you missed so much. I'm listening at a box full of documents in closed envelopes now. This is how well. exciting it's got. <laughs> oh, I'm oh, on you, but I'm screen sharing, so you can't see, actually. Do you have a permanent backdrop in your living room, George? No, this is my MDF trick. There we go. Just a bit of wood with wallpaper on. <laughs> then I tuck it behind my wardrobe in the bedroom once I'm done. And then I have a similar one at my unit, like just another one. So I'm always on the go. <laughs> Elmo wants to know why you do not list solely on the app. I find it quicker personally. I take pics and then list straight from there. I find it easier to do research on the desktop um, and absorb that information quicker and easier. I find it so much easier to type on a regular keyboard than I do on my phone. So doing my research, clicking through to sell similar, adjusting the listing is like 10 times quicker for me and my fat fingers than on the <laughs> phone. Um, so that's why, really, in a nutshell. Hey, um, the complete opposite. I list just on the iPad app, and that's it. <laughs> iPad's not so bad, because you get virtually a full-size keyboard on that, don't you? Yeah, I just do a photo session like now, and then 
That way, everything I need to list is just in one album like this. Quite a lot of listening to do. <laughs> I'll just go on like that, really. There we go. Yeah, we used to have an iPod, and I managed to drop it on a concrete floor and smash it. Uh, <laughs> it wasn't clever. I've got my extra sturdy, um, bounceable uh, case on, because I'm prone to dropping things. <laughs> Uh, say what now? So you record each individual item and not, for example, 10 items for a tenner. When I look, if I go to, like I went to the jumble sale at the weekend, I will go to my logbook um, of cash purchased stock, which I don't have to hand, and I will list, I won't go to the, to the detail of every item, but I might list job lot of board games for £15 or like that BBC computer I bought that's at the back there, BBC computer, software and accessories, £30. And that's that's enough for what the tax man needs to know. He need, he needs to know what you bought, where you bought it, and when you bought it, and how much you spent. So that's how I do it. Um, I think everyone freaks out about tax when they first start. I know I did. Well, it is a bit daunting, and mm. and I understand that. And it was when I started. I had an accountant for the first few years. Um, when we set up the high street shop because we were VAT registered then as well. And it was so much paperwork. Yeah. Um, then I, I taught myself everything I needed to know. Uh, and I dropped the accountant and then I did all my own VAT and tax returns. And then we, when we closed the shop, we deregistered from VAT. So it's just a tax return I do now. Yeah. Which the first time as well is daunting and I get that, but it's actually quite simple. When I first started, it was Excel spreadsheet, what it was, the date it was, where I got it, when I sold it, how I sold it, the fees, postage, just one long line for every single item. And I didn't last long. <laughs> yeah, well, the taxman doesn't care. The taxman just yeah. wants to know what are your expenses in running your business, including yeah. the cost of your stock and how much did you make? He doesn't That's care if you lost money on a, on a pair of shoes or you made a small <laughs> fortune on an Atari cartridge. He doesn't give a damn. He just wants to know overall how much money you made. And that's what he's going to tax you on. And it's as simple as that. Yeah. But disclaimer, we are not tax experts. Bring up the HRC <laughs> and ask them if you want real advice, OK? <laughs> <laughs> OK, right, I'm going to submit this listing. I'm going to do it. I'm going to list two items whilst live. Uh, <laughs> while I'm doing that, there was a question what did you both do before this what was your last paid employment george oh god don't remind me <laughs> um it was like a computer company um they sort of bought in um job lots of computer software from big companies like um bt uh, bank of england etc we would have to wipe all the data off and basically refurb them to sell on again but uh, it was soul destroying. <laughs> and then, yeah, left that um, to be housewife for a couple of years. And then when the girls both started work, work at <laughs> school. Work. When you, when you sent them down the mines. <laughs> that's child, child labour, isn't it? When yeah. they both started school, that's when I started this, yeah. So nothing special, really. Well, my last paid job was uh, working in the fingerprint bureau for Hertfordshire Police after I left my uniform police officer job. Um, you enjoyed that, and... didn't you? <laughs> Sorry? You enjoyed the fingerprints, didn't you? <laughs> I couldn't stand it. No. <laughs> it, was, oh, it was a very quiet, very methodical, very boring office. You know, yeah. what we were handling and what we were dealing with was actually quite interesting. Um, yeah. I used to do a lot of the developing of the actual print into an evidential uh, photograph and that sort of stuff. And it was yeah, it was fun. I used to have access to Hertfordshire's database of fingerprints of all the criminals and regular people. This massive right. uh, climate controlled library of fingerprints. I had access to that and used to manage that, which was quite interesting. But it was just so dull. I was just... <laughs> I was itching to get home and list on eBay every day. 
yeah. and I was itching for the weekend to come so I could go boot sailing. <laughs> I was living like a dual life, you know. Yeah. I was um, security cleared at this computer place and we got in Hampshire police and Manchester police, like stolen phones and laptops. And uh, obviously we have to go on there and there's some dodgy stuff on them sort of things. So that was quite interesting, but that's as exciting as it got, really. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so there you go I hope that answered your question being a housewife is cool apparently there you go says Peter <laughs> well I still do that now really <laughs> i got to balance everything <clears throat> um, someone's asking about poly bags says, there should be a bunch of links below in our video descriptions on most of our videos um, you can click through either to our website where there's a whole page of the supplies we use um, but there'll be a bunch of links below this video um, Sean's talking about VAT threshold. You can make some serious money selling under 85,000 sales a year and not be VAT registered, especially if you're buying stuff for a pound and selling for 19.99. Exactly. If you keep your turnover that low, but your return on investment high, you can you can stay under that. And we we have been hovering under it for a while. Yeah. Um, we're not avoiding it. We're just oh, no. that that's just where it is. That's just where we're ticking along. <laughs> The same here. I'm quite a little way from it, but um, yeah, not on purposely going below it. <laughs> Good afternoon, taxman. <laughs> if you're watching. <laughs> um, Nick, how do you find the new lights? Yeah, fine. They're, they're the ones that are in George's shop right there. Um, same ones, yeah. I'm quite pleased with them. For me, it was all well, same as your situation, really. It was about space saving. As you can see, there's one there. Yeah, you can see in your videos, the big umbrellas, the right in the way sort of thing. Mm. And they're more versatile because I can use them. I use them now to light us. I don't have it on now. I've got natural light, but I use them yeah. uh, to light us when, we're, when, when we go live and that sort of stuff. Um, right, I'm going to get this listing live which i said i was going to do <clears throat> minutes ago and then answer some more questions so i want to go 14.99 free shipping which will never make me rich but it owes me nothing and i want it out of the house oh ads is in hey ads if you're still there oh yeah i saw ads ads drop me a message if you want to pop in and say hello i haven't spoken to you for ages i haven't spoken to ads uh, face to face before that'd be interesting <laughs> Right, 2.3 kilos, so I'm going to do that Hermes, or we'll change that to Hermes Tract. I'll still do free shipping on it. There won't be much money in this, but like I say, it just needs to be got rid of. I'll leave GSP on. Save as draft. Well, I might go, go into that video in a minute and see what, what um, how many views it's on, if it's reached 100,000 yet. <laughs> <laughs> Um, right, photo library. Do, do, do. I've got to find it. I can read out some comments if you want from your video. <laughs> uh, yes, some you shouldn't read out. <laughs> I'm yeah. trying to delete the uh, abusive ones. This is the least eco friendly thing ever. That's uh, the latest one. <laughs> okay, I can think of some, some more non-eco-friendly actions <laughs> than buying sellotape right so those pictures are loading up done let's kick this one off have you declared it to hmrc because that's over a hundred pound in tax you owe the tax man i think i might have replied to that earlier oh i think you yeah you have oh and i did as well yeah <laughs> Yeah, it was nice. A few people, there was RJ, Carlo, and I think yourself and others were replying to some of these um, people who jumped to the conclusion that I'm, I don't pay tax. It's a weird conclusion to come to, but there you go. They deals are meant to be for everyone. <laughs> well, everyone should have got there quicker then. Yeah. <laughs> 
Okay, so that is now listed. I think my favourite one was um, you should have bought a bundle of razors or something like that. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. That made me chuckle. People take issue at the strangest things. Yeah. <laughs> Um, so here was saying a while back I couldn't list on iPad or tablet because I'm too used to keyboard yeah I can type much quick on a regular keyboard too um, right I did see some questions do you use a barcode scanner yes I use a barcode scanner uh, attached to my Mac. This is a USB one. You can get them pretty cheap on eBay or Amazon. And I use the eBay app, which has a barcode scanner built in, and the Amazon app. Um, hi, RJ. Hope you are well too. too. Can I put a parcel into a post box if it has a prepaid label? I don't know. My stuff, which is click and drop, I, I drop off in sealed up bags with a manifest, as in paperwork, to prove it's all been paid for. So with my sort of account, I don't believe so. I think if you print off your postage through eBay and shuttle and that, I think you can, can't you? Just drop them off in a post box. Not sure. Never used it. I have, and it got there okay. <laughs> yeah. It might be worth just popping in a post office and asking them, not that <laughs> they'd know, but they might, they might know. You won't get proof of um, that you sent it, though. That's the only thing, if you do post it in a post box. I've heard that before, Sean, about if you if you are a sole trader and go over 85,000, upgrade to a limited company before, and then you start again at zero. Yeah, that makes sense. Is it best to have one or two lights? Two, two lights works best for me because then I can angle them at about 45 degrees from the item and it eliminates most of the, the cast shadows. Um, I'm sure you could make it work with one, but two, oh, you've got two. two. Yeah. Minimizes shadows, yeah. Is eBay full-time job pay more than real job? If you mean, does an eBay, does selling on eBay full-time pay more than the real job? I mean, how can we answer that question? Because we don't know what yeah. real job you're talking about. Um. I earn more than I used to when I had paid employment. So for me, yes. I was always near sort of living wage or whatever they call it. So I'm earning a lot more <laughs> and I'm a lot happier as well, most importantly. Yeah. A lot of people's decisions and reasons for getting into this line of work aren't necessarily for money. And I wouldn't necessarily say get into this to make a lot of money. I'd yeah. say if you're not happy... And most of us that have shared our stories, you, you may have heard George talking about his story the other the other week. Um, it's because we were dissatisfied with our way of life and our jobs. And that's what drove us to, to seek this path. But financially, it's worked out for us. But you'd have to try it for yourself, really. I think you need a natural passion for it as well, because I've had sort of three or four family members since starting YouTube try and sort of replicate what I'm doing and they've already given up just because they don't realise the amount of work and effort it actually takes yep oh it's not an easy option no I <laughs> it work... won't look like it but yeah not. I mean when we were building it up and when we built up the high street shop I worked harder than I'd ever worked in my life but yeah. it didn't feel like that because I was enjoying it and I was yeah getting so much out of it oh we've got a super chat Krillin hey how you doing is there local VAT, city, stroke, county, or just national? No, it's national. It's a national tax. 
not county wide. Nick, um, Ads sent you a message apparently. He just messaged me. Ads has sent me a message. What a messenger, or I guess it is. Uh, I'm not sure. Ads. Oh, yeah. All right. I'll drop you a link. Oh, I've tried to drop you a link. I've just dropped you <laughs> a copied title that says Documents in Closed Wallets. Okay, you <laughs> won't help. Um, all right, hold on. Do we have to mentally repair for ads? Uh, prepare for ads, I mean. Yeah, brace yourselves. I know I do for Thursday talks. I'm worn out after the end of them. <laughs> I haven't caught one of those for a few weeks. <laughs> it's normally lunchtime and he sort of comes on and I pop in. <laughs> right, sent. Oh, uh, Sean talking about VAT thresholds again. You'll have to um, let me know how that goes because, like I say, we don't actively stay under, but we don't push it as hard as we could for two reasons, really. One, because we don't have to, and two, because I'm trying to work less because I don't have to. Um, <laughs> but it'll be interesting to know if that works out for you. Here we go. Hey, Move on. Hi. Hey. Hey. Let me uh, light on. Where's your green screen? Well, I think I'll put it up because it's a bit like the light exposure is terrible. So, <laughs> yeah, you might shut the curtains. <laughs> James has a very valid point. He says, Nick, your storeroom always looks rammed and you have around 350 items on your eBay. 350? I think, I think it's nearer 500, but I'm not sure. You could be right. On your eBay page, what percentage of your stock is actually listed as it looks around 50%? It's way less than 50%. I reckon we've got about a quarter of our stock listed, if that. I've got a loft full as well. Anyway, hello, Ads. How are you? Hi, Adam. Adam? I'm all right, thanks. How are you? Good to see you. Are you working at the minute? Um, well, not really, but I can do because I've just transferred some photos to my phone. So I've got like, uh, to my computer even, I've got like 10 or 13 listings I think that I could do. Something like that anyway. You don't have to. You can just keep us entertained. <laughs> well, I'll do, I'll do a few. I should do a few, to be honest. I really should. Ads doesn't need to work. He's loaded with his crypto. I'm not bloody loaded. I might be loaded in a year or two when it starts taking off again, but my God, it's terrible at the moment. <laughs> What's that? Like Bitcoin and all that malarkey? No, I, well, I don't, I don't actually have any Bitcoin. I invest in uh, mainly a cryptocurrency called Steam, which is basically... Um, pay, it's like... Um, social media where you get paid for it basically so it's like facebook but you get paid for it i have no idea <laughs> absolutely yeah. no idea what it's about. that that went in one ear and out the other i'll be honest well this is a problem it's kind of uh it's kind of hard to get people on board with it because it's so so confusing at the minute you know people just don't understand it so Have your car boot started yet, both of you? I think mine are around this time. I've not even checked, really. I've been I've been so much like doing the auctions and stuff that I've just not really been on it this year for car boots. I've done a few indoor ones, though. Yeah, they're, they're starting here now. Well, you may have seen we went to one at the weekend and there was so much gear there. I could have, I could have <laughs> bought twice as much, really. Found some yeah, lovely stuff. I went to two this weekend, just gone, and I filled the car again. Yeah. <laughs> but my later one starts this weekend, the Lazy Bones, which is quite handy. The one on the weekend, they were both early ones, so I got to the second one later after everyone else had been. I've got loads again. Right, so this is the exciting life that I lead. I'm now listing a filter assembly fuel. So it's a fuel filter. It's a strange looking one. 
but it looks like it's not worth a lot to be honest. Let's go into this sold. I think I'll be lucky to get twelve ninety nine for this. Oh, hang on, they're not official ones. There's so many people selling other branded ones and like generic ones. Are um, those car parts like mainly multi quantity stuff? I was saying to George earlier, unfortunately, at this point, no, I kind of turned no. in on that stuff to start with. When it made sense, get the multi stuff on first. Yeah. And I'll put some lines we had like so many of, and it was just great. But no, these, for example, well, I've got a couple of each. Are these the same? No, annoyingly, they're all different part numbers. But yeah, most of this, it's one of each. And when it's like £10, £12 an item, it's just annoying. Yeah. Um, but when you've got it and it owes you nothing, you might as well list it, right? It really does like get to me now. Like these days, we're doing 10, 12, 15 pound items. I'm really starting to like uh, want to do higher and higher value because mm. I do like I, I try and do a lot of like 30 quid items, like that sort of range. But also, I end up listing a lot of 10, 12 pound items from the auction job lots. but it can really get boring if you're doing like 20 listings of, of just 10 pound, 12 pound items. Yeah. But they can be the stuff that sells quick as well. Oh yeah. I mean, they're, they're like basically my bread and butter and stuff, but it can just be sometimes like, oh, I want, I want to list like 40 mm -hmm. or 50 pound items. So I really do want to get like uh, some more higher value stuff from the auction. I still maintain that. I think the, the ideal thing, certainly for, the situation I'm in is a is a good mix of the both. Yeah. Um and then your, you know, 10, 15 pound items tick along and keep you busy. And then every day or so you might get a nice little surprise. That's kind of, that's kind of where I'm at at the moment. Like I'll get probably like once a week I'll get a 50 pound sale, something like that. And then mainly for the rest of the week it's quite a few 20 pound couple of 30 pounds and then a lot of 10 pound like 10 12 pound so for those of you watching this that are are new here because i don't know if you've i don't know if i've said to you recently or if you've seen but we've we've had a video go mental ads um, oh yeah i saw that yeah we've had over yeah, a, thousand, um, a thousand new subs in the last 24 hours my god and it's all gone a bit balmy. I need I to saw... check that video because it was nearly at 100,000 earlier. Oh, my God. I, I saw it was at 31K, so I didn't know it had gone, like, insane. Yeah. But if, uh, you know, if, like, a video takes off, sometimes it just, like, proper takes off, doesn't it, in, like, a matter of three or four days? Yeah. Well, I, I, as you might know, I chat a lot with Steve and Steph over in America. Yeah. And they had a video where they filmed – he had his GoPro mounted and he filmed him. And that, that went – crazy yeah, didn't it that's on, i don't know one or two million views yeah. now but it had an instant knock-on effect on their channel and this what's going on on our channel is nowhere near that scale but instantly the channel as a whole so many videos are getting views because people yeah. are finding the channel and browsing and for the last 48 hours we've been doing 2,000 views an hour on my god i know and it's i mean you know what it's like that, that doesn't happen on our that's channel, crazy but. i've uh a lot of the channels like I watch, weirdly enough, they're not reselling channels, but I've seen like this weird thing happen with them where um, I don't know whether you know Dr. Jake's British Reviews. I know Tom, I think, has watched him before. Or I think I he mentioned him. Yeah. His, one of his videos just took off the other day and got like over a million, like literally in about, I don't know, a, a week or so. Um, and then another channel um which is ray as the entrepreneur he can he's done a few ebay videos um but he's like his channel just blew up like over a period of a few weeks because he did some awesome videos that just randomly took off you know well it's so hard because the thing is i i feel with youtube the more you actually try and make a video take off the less it will take off because every time i've tried to do it it doesn't work. But if you just don't do it and just do what you're going to do, then one randomly will just take off. <clears throat> yeah, I think so, because there's, there's no way of predicting it. And if I went yeah. out and made the same video I did the other week now, I almost guarantee it wouldn't do the same thing. It, it, no, I, it I think it would get quite a few views, but no way near that, I don't think. No. 
let me go and I'll, I'll go and check um, current analytics and see where it's at. Because the ones that are displayed on YouTube are normally like quite a way behind. Let's go and have a look. Have you like uh, 24, 48 hours behind, something like that? Mm. I'm not sure. I know AdSense is always like two days behind. I don't, so I yeah. don't know how much it's earning yet, really. Um, Although that might have updated for today. Let's go and have a look. 100k views would be quite a lot because I, I basically was, I, I love like working out how much like the big channels are on, like who get like a million views. And uh, if they're like, let's say they're, uh, what is it? Oh, CPM. If they're CPM, if they could get like a $5 CPM per thousand views, that'd be five grand per million views. So that'd be a yeah, lot. CPM varies a lot. CPM in yeah. America, for some of the American friends that I have, is nearly double the UK one. My God. It's oh, no, crazy. That, it's crazy. Oh, hang on. Revenue's coming in. Okay. $62 for a day. That's before it went crazy big. There you yeah. Go. Wow, that's good. Um, where, where am I going? Real time. So that video has had 58,000 for the last 48 hours. Wow. Channels are 97,000 for the last 48 hours. That's just so far beyond what it's ever been before. Yeah. I can't see an up to date hmm. on the actual video. Oh, it's showing nearly ninety three thousand on the actual video. Oh. Yeah, it's got it's got a really good appeal though that video because it was uh, the thumbnail was like six hundred pound in an hour, wasn't it? And then it was like clearing the supermarket shelves. That is like proper prime quality kind of what people want to click on. Yeah, I didn't know if that was too clickbaity. <laughs> no, I, I don't know. I don't think it is. <laughs> no, I'm just pleased that finally we've got a video that's doing something exciting. It's been yeah. long enough. It just takes it just takes ages and ages and ages and trial and error and stuff. And you know, as I say, if you try and predict it, you know, it's kind of hard, isn't it? Like I, as I said, like um, some videos that I've tried to make things happen with just haven't worked. Well, on hunt like loads of occasions that just haven't worked there's only been one or two that i've got decent views on you know i think yeah i'm happy with it yeah yeah i think you just have to document what you're doing and be honest and open and if it's going to happen it will happen like you say trying to force it is just probably the worst yeah thing. but i mean for us now and for a lot of other people as well it's like youtube is just it's literally something we enjoy doing like i would do this even if like i didn't get paid for it i would still do it i might not do it to the same level i'm doing it but i'd certainly i'd definitely be doing videos because i just love the editing i love I, ju I just love making videos just yeah it's just brilliant like creating like this this just this kind of it's almost like a product it's like you've created a product and you're putting it out there and and it's kind of like your stamp on it it's, yeah. yeah, it's really nice. It's exactly that. It's making little mini films, essentially. Isn't yeah, it? yeah, that's exactly the best way to describe it. I mean, the light for me, I, I there's two distinctions that the edited videos are one thing, and that's where my sort of creative side comes out. But the lives are yeah. a completely different thing for me. Lives, it's just about interaction. There's no point. On, yeah. There's no real point for me being live on the internet right now, apart from the fact that I'd rather be sat here talking to somebody. <laughs> You know what I mean? This is this is more yeah. interesting to me. Okay, so I've gone with genuine Hyundai fuel filter fits Hyundai Matrix 1.6 01 to 10, part number and new. That will do. Tommy Pithkers asks George, why are your board games locked up in a cage in your living room? They're not stock; they're the girls. It's we're quirky. We've got these old working lockers and we put the girls books and that in to go with a front room mid-century look that's all <laughs> okay so part number
So if you're just joining us and you're wondering what these uh, three blokes are doing live on the internet, <laughs> it's a good question. Um, we're basically all full-time resellers. We earn a living selling goods online, both secondhand and new. And um, we all have YouTube channels showing what we do. And we're just live at the moment trying to get a little bit of work done. Oh yeah, actually, George, yep. how are you? How are you uh, finding YouTube? Are you enjoying it? Yeah, I'm enjoying it. it takes a lot more work than I thought it did. <laughs> like, what did? Um, I did say in my live earlier, I've done a little live. I'm taking this week off because the girls are off for Easter. It's yeah, quite a lot doing business, family. Yeah, it's going well. Still trying to build confidence with the GoPro when I'm at the boot sales and that. Yeah, um, and it, it's hard, like. Yeah. Uh, building confidence when you're out and about in it when when yeah. you film this is someone's face with this camera sticking up at them <laughs> well i filmed um on sunday when i went around the boot cell and um i just held it because i've got the little session one i can literally hold it like that in my hand you can't see it at all and yeah. i completely forgot about it i was so less self-conscious um i haven't actually looked at the footage yet so whether that works or not i don't know but i'll let you know um you was busted at the uh jumble sale weren't you last time oh it totally was yeah <laughs> i was gonna come to that one as well but i had my one around the corner that was on that's why i didn't go okay this part has taken me way too long to list for 12.99 Okay, da, da, da. stick that in there. <coughs> well, another thing I started doing that might be a handy little tip. I don't know if you guys are doing this. Now we're all forced to do good till cancelled. <clears throat> um, I'm putting, as well as my location in the custom label, um, because I have racked numbers for these things, um, I will then put the date. So that's a way of knowing how long an item's been on, because we're going to have no idea how long an item's been on. They won't be ending every month. So I don't know if anyone else is doing that, but... You know, the, I... The skew, was it? Hey? In the SKU... Um, yeah, yeah, the SKU box yeah. or custom label, yeah. Yeah, I've started how much I paid, dash where I got it, dash the month I listed it at, yeah. No, I've like never done the whole skew thing, and I know I really should or the custom label thing, but I've never done it. Um, I it started is, a couple of weeks ago. It is getting to a point now where like I've got a really well, a pretty large inventory, and it's like mm, maybe I should start doing that because that's where you can reference uh, where it is as well in your stock, isn't it? Yeah, and then. The the advantage for me of having a date or a month in there is that I can search by the, the, the SKU box. So I could search for everything that was listed in like say six months ago and put it all on yeah. sale. Or I can just bring up, up all of those things and then edit accordingly. And it's yeah. just another way of referencing how old an item is. But do you have a, how, what's your storage method as? Do you have like bins with numbers on or do you not? I have, a ton of Dexium whacking and loads and loads of boxes like for full of ceramics and separated. Um, like sometimes I separate them with like bubble wrap and stuff like that so we don't break. Um, I have, uh, what else do I have? Uh, I have like a full rack um, full of board games still, like literally like a full rack. Just full. Um, I've got a load of electronics and stuff in like, big plastic storage containers on the racking. Um, I've got paintings at the top of the racking. Um, but yeah, mainly just the decks in racking and then boxes. Um, and that's about it, really. And then I have the same in my lockup as well, where I store all my unlisted. But it, but it's not numbered location, so you just have to remember it? or It's what? all, like, it's organised in terms of item. So it's like... I have one box for teapots. I have one box for plates. I have one box for 
mugs, etc. So I know which box it's in kind of thing through that. Um, but other than that, no, I, I wouldn't have a clue necessarily. But I do try and keep fairly organised. I'm not 100% all the time, but I try and keep fairly organised with that. And then it's quite easy because I know that, as I say, if it's like a teapot, I, I only have one box for teapot. So I know it's got to be in there anyway. So it's not so bad, really. I mean, sometimes it can catch me out, but it's not a regular occurrence these days. If it works, it works. Yeah. But as I say, if I get, like, too much more, it won't work. It'll start not working, and then I need to have a look at it. I've only got about 250 listed items, so mine's all mental memory. But it's in categories yeah. like you, that's, like, Shoes, boots, electronics, like that, yeah. Well, with the bigger stuff, you know, it's it's easier to not lose, I guess. <laughs> you know, oh, I mean? oh, where's that sideboard gone? I yeah. put Dan here, didn't I? Exactly. <laughs> oh, I'm bored of these parts, I'll tell you that much. Right, just had a message. I've got to go get the wife from work now. And I've no done work. my photographing, so I have to dash now. Cool. Well, thanks for popping in. Thanks for the invite. Guys, if you guys haven't checked out George's channel, I'll put a link below. It's not there currently, but after the after the video, I'll put a link below. Or just search George Ross. You'll find it anyway. Yeah. Just next. See you, Reds. See you later. All right, man. See ya. Bye. Well, what time are we now? Quarter to five. Let's let's go till five, unless you've got a dash ads. Uh, no, that's all right. It's been a long time since I've talked to you live. I think you came on the channel. That was it was like 2016 or something, 2017 or something. No Eight. way, really? It, no, like honestly, if you look back, it will be like that. It'll it be like, like it was about six months ago. <laughs> no, it was ages ago, absolutely ages ago. Wow. Because I think I've only been on like the chat chat once, maybe twice, twice maybe. I think twice actually. Yeah. Wow. Um, just having a quick look in the side chat. I've literally only listed one item, but oh well. I haven't done many more. I think I'm on three. <laughs> it, it, is, it is a 50 quid item, though, so it's not so bad. Nice. It was a... Um, like a studio pottery bowl that I found in the charity shop. So I think it was three pound and it turns out it was actually a, a pretty good buy, but I didn't even know at the time. I thought it might be like 25 quid or something, but turns out that I can probably get a little bit more than that. So pretty happy with that. Cool. Now you, you kind of, should we say evolved what you did and what you sold into more of the vintage and antiques. Is that still your focus or are you doing um, yeah, I'm a bit of everything, really. I don't do, uh, you know, I don't, I, I, I suppose I am pinned down a little bit to antiques, but I like doing a bit of everything. I do a bit of toys. I got a job lot of ink the other week, brand new and sealed ink. Um, so I do a bit of that. I do electronics still, but not too much. Um, I mean, obviously, mainly what I do now is antiques and collectibles. Um, but I do, I try and do bits and bobs as well, because that, I'm kind of like you, you know, you often say, like, if I were to do one thing, I'd get bored. I know that, like, antiques are, is, like, a big area, but I feel like I still want to do something else. Like, I want to do toys, or I want to do this. It's kind of why I like to do other things aside from reselling, like, investing and things like that, because I just feel this need to just do all these different things, you know? It's, it's just really, it's so hard to stay still, you know, you feel like you're missing out, you know, you want to... That, that's mm -hmm. exactly what it is the, the old FOMO thing yeah I find I don't know if it's with age but I'm finding I really need to focus on on a, two or three things and for me it's kind of boiled down to eBay Amazon and YouTube yeah and although I've tried like merch for example I've tried other things and it, it just it just distills my attention you know what I mean I spread it too thin yeah and I'm not doing any of them properly I, I struggle as it is to maintain my eBay and Amazon shops, let alone, you know, doing more. Yeah. But, yeah. I know what you're saying. And I, I'm, I'm similar, in fact. But, yeah, I'm not very good at focusing on lots of things. So I think I've had to 
accept that. But also I've been like, you know, I was thinking a while ago about this kind of thing of what sort of life do I want to build myself? And um, I was thinking to myself, like, I love reselling but I know it's not going to be the thing that makes me rich. You know, I'm going to have to put a lot of work and effort in and skate and scale it and everything to make me like a lot of money. So then I was thinking, right, well, I want to do something else that's more scalable alongside it. So then like I was starting to think about the investing and stuff like that. And then I got into crypto and um, kind of just going down that sort of rabbit hole, learning about that. And that was like, I was so so enjoying it and everything like so so interested in it and also it's obviously a lot scalable because i can put my money in and then my money's working for me and then obviously what i can do is i can reinvest that money back into the business like the the income i'm getting from it and then build my business that way so it's like uh i want to try and do all these little things and then funnel all this money into different things and then like build it and build it and build it like that you know I think it's, it's, it's a good approach in a way because you don't know which one of these things is a going to take off or b going to be that thing that really excites you. So you might as well have a go at enough, and then something yeah. will stick, something will take off, something will do it for you. I just like I just like doing bits. I'm kind of a, a person who likes to do uh, like a few different things. Um, just in little bits and that's that sounds terrible because it's like jack of all trades master of none but that's just kind of like my personality you know i just i just, I just can't stay still on just one thing it's really i don't know but you're don't still know. so young you, you really are still so young so you, this is the time to try all this stuff out while you've got the endless energy you know and that, yeah. and that kind of mentality that can do mentality you might as well do it to be perfectly honest it's kind of like um why I, I went to learn photoshop and adobe premiere pro and stuff i just i love all the editing and stuff and I, that's something else i love to do so it's kind of but it like it it is terrible sometimes because the amount i can spread myself too thin is quite scary and then you think oh god i better concentrate on this a little bit more because some things just don't produce the money at first and you can't you've got to go where the money is at you know for, for majority of the time because otherwise you've not got an income so it's kind of like you've got to balance it yeah well at least you have to be enjoying the process it's like it's like going back to youtube which is always a, a good example for that sort of thing like i i would not recommend anybody do youtube for money yeah um, but there is potential for it to be an income stream but we're a good example. I'm five years and nearly a thousand videos in, and I've only just had a video go a bit bonkers. Yeah. So if you're prepared to knuckle down and work hard, then yeah, give it a go. But I, that shouldn't be the reason for getting into it. The reason we kept at it was is because it it's enjoyable. It's a huge part of our social life, and it's fun, you know. Yeah. Without that, it would be a lot of work for very little reward. When when I first started YouTube back in about 2013 for just like basically me and my friend wanted to do a channel and we were hell bent on getting money. We were like, oh, this is going to make us rich because at the time we were like 17. We were like, yeah, we were, we're going to we're going to do this and we're going to do like a few videos and it's going to be really cool and we're going to get a load of money. But then after that, obviously, I took a break from YouTube for a couple of years and then I came back on. Um, well, actually, I did a vaping channel in the interim. But then I came back on to do reselling. And as soon as I did my first reselling video, I was like, it was in the back of my mind, don't get me wrong about the money kind of thing. But I kind of just did a video because I enjoyed it. I wanted to be a part of the community, you know? And uh, and then it just grew from there. And I started absolutely loving the editing and loving just doing weird and wacky videos that I could kind of create. And then oh, it- Oh it, yeah, oh yeah. Yeah, you know? <laughs> For those of you that haven't checked out Ads' channel, I recommend it, but be prepared. Go in yeah. with an open mind. Yeah. Go in with an open mind. No, yeah, I mean, if people, like, so, someone would watch like some of the reselling songs that I've done and be like totally like, whoa, I can't handle this kind of thing. So, yeah, you've got to be prepared. What does your mum make of the whole YouTube thing and how that's taken off for you? Um, She's happy about it i suppose you know i mean 
I don't know what to say really. She's always been very supportive of me and stuff. And she, she does get a bit like, uh, I suppose she gets a little bit cringe, a little bit cringe worthy or whatever when I do like a comedy show or a song like, oh my God, you really have to take it that far kind of thing, you know? But I just, I love it. I've got, I've got so many plans for different comedy shorts, but then that's another thing that that's like a creative project. And like, if I want to do a comedy short well, I have to spend a few days on it, like, you know, a few full days on it. And it's just spending that time for, for basically no money. It's kind of like, I can't, I can't take all that time out of my resign business or out of other things that I want to do or need to do. Um, you know, as much as I'd like to, I re I'd love to do like the loads of different comedy shorts, but I just, yeah, I just can't do it. It's such a shame. Yeah. Yeah. I've had that conversation with myself. There was a time when I was putting way too much time into this when it really wasn't paying anything. Yeah. Um, and you have to find a balance, I guess. I mean, it, it is hard to find that balance, but I'm trying to think to myself, what do I want, like at the moment, what do I really want to do with YouTube? Like, is there anything left that I really want to do? Because I've done podcasts, I've done songs, I've done comedies, I've done haul videos, done sales updates, done all the normal stuff that people do. Uh, and then, you know, load of different things. I've done live shows and stuff with different people that ended up fizzling out at one point or, uh, or another. I've done a live show on a Thursday, obviously, for, God, better part of three and a half years or something now. So I've done like pretty much all I want to do with YouTube. So now it's kind of about, well, is there anything else I want to do? I need to kind of hone it down and think, right, I want to spend a bit less time doing it, uh, um, but just focus on the things that I really want to do um, and just get a bit more quality out there, I suppose, you know? Yeah, exactly. Well, everything evolves. evolves yeah. Actually, you know what I mean? You'll figure it out as you go trying to work out what international shipping would be on this do you do your own international or do you tend to stick GSP? i tend to stick with gsp i've done it a few times i have done like when someone's requested it i thought to myself yeah you know what i'll do it but i've never put on my own like actual international on the listing i've just kind of tended to stay with gsp and know that um i think i think it's david mcgregor or someone he was doing an experiment recently with was it with his own international shipping? I think I think it was, and I think he said he did really well with it, like just doing his own international shipping. So, but I mean, I can't. There is kind of a, an international market for for ceramics and stuff. Certainly, like um, I think I think certainly like China and stuff. I think I've sent quite a bit of stuff to China or maybe Japan somewhere like that, but you know, with the GSP, but um, yeah, but there certainly is like a market there for it, but it's not as prominent as other things like video games and stuff, like video games is a massive international market. Yeah. Oh, and on the car parts, I mean, I've, I've sold, I don't know what the percentage is on the car parts, but a huge amount, because some of the makes, I mean, it wasn't all Hyundai, like this Sang Young stuff. Yeah. These, there's not many in the UK, but there's loads in the far east south america and that those parts have gone all over the world so without i mean gsp is on the heavier stuff but the lighter stuff i mean that will go 10 pounds international track and signed anywhere in the world so yeah worth, worth putting on just got to find the picture now <laughs> so many pictures on my phone i need to clear it out So uh, what was it that made you start doing these like uh, listing live streams? Because that's quite a new thing, isn't it, for you? Just something new to try, really. It's yeah. certainly not uh, it's certainly not the most efficient um, listing. <laughs> yeah, I know, I know. I'm like that. I'm like I'm literally just typing in the title of my second listing, and I ended my first listing about ten minutes, fifteen minutes ago. <laughs> oh, that is terrible. <laughs> Yeah, it's just something different, and it's nice to to get different people on and have a catch up. Really, on more of a not that the tat chat's formal, but it's more of an informal basis yeah. where it doesn't matter if we just waffle about nothing, really. Yeah, it's quite nice just knowing that like kind of anyone can pop in. You know, you can just sort of spread the word out there, and people can just pop in when they like. Exactly. Okay, I think I found it. 
maybe. 192. Right, so I think we'll wrap up soon. All right. Um, if you are still watching, thanks for joining us. I'm going to finish this listing uh, and soon we'll wrap up. Peter's just gone. Uh, he says Wednesday live still at, still at 4 p.m. So Peter's going live on Wednesday. I'll tell you that the community you mentioned earlier about the, the whole community side of this, it's unrecognizable from when oh my uh, god when I, I started. And I, I struggle to think back to what it was like. I used to get excited when somebody commented on a video. Yeah. You know what I mean? And it's got to a level now where I can't even read all the comments. I can't keep up with it. I can't and and the community itself i can't keep up with the videos let alone you know i can't keep up with the I mean, panels let alone yeah there's so many but I, there was a time about a couple of years ago where i would sort of troll through youtube every now and then like every couple of weeks to see new channels pop up and mm. uh, you know there'd be one popping up here and there but now it's crazy like this so i literally look on my home screen and then i'll get recommendations and there'll be like a new one popping up every now and then it's really it's pretty crazy like a lot a lot um, more frequent than it used to be because i remember back when i first started i started about four weeks or six weeks after ben started his channel and then fake rachel was just before me as well but there was there wasn't that many back then there was probably about 12 channels maybe 15 channels maximum and now there's my god i don't even know there must be over 50 or something easily I, it like i say i find it hard to keep up with just what channels let alone what videos are being put out on all of the channels it, it's, it's pretty yeah. much impossible now. Um, i i just i can't watch them all you know i'll be honest and just say that i can't you know i can't sit down and uh watch exactly. I, 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 there's, all, no you know, chance. there's no chance i would i i literally I watch Lonnie quite a lot because I like Lonnie. I, we, I don't know. I just like his presentation style with his new videos. You know, like his vlogs. Um, yeah, absolutely. I watch, I'll always, I'll always watch Steve Green because he's just a legend. I just love Steve Green. Um, and then I dip in and out of Mel Sparrow's end, and then I dip in and out of yours, and then I dip in and out of a few other people's. Um, but yeah, it's just actually like I just can't spend the time watching them all anymore. No, it's impossible. It really is. I'm just trying to find a location that works for this size of a thing. Let's go there. C7, we're going to call that. C7, April 2019. I'm going to go for £20 for that. Again, not going to get rich off these car parts. But last night I was listing a load of light clusters at like hundred pounds, hundred and fifty pounds, and per wow. item, the the per item cost roughly it was so hard to work out was about between fifty p and a pound an item. So if only I could find more deals like that, eh? Just be yeah. I was uh, listing uh, that ink that I told you about that ink job lot, yeah. and uh, it was so good listing multi quantity. I've not listed multi quantity for ages because as you would expect most of the items i get from york you now it's all like individual items um and it was so cool just putting on like literally 10 items at 20 pound each and it's just like one listing i was so good and then literally about three days later eight of them sold for about i don't know 140 odd 150 or something something like that so no. that was awesome like literally like three days later got the kaching. i was like yes that's that's how i want to do it you know exactly Karen saying question nick that weird fish top i have is a 46 inch chest maybe a bit big it probably is a bit big then that's a shame um oh yeah rod saying sang young loads here yeah australia far east there's loads of um, Sang Young. A lot of it's, um, oh no, it's Isuzu that's trucks. I've been listing Isuzu parts uh, as well, and there's loads of those in the Far East. But yeah, Sang Young never really took off over here. But weirdly, that means that I can sell them for quite a premium because there's yeah. hardly in the UK because you have to import from the Far East. Uh, right, let's read a few more bits in the chat before we go. 
Uh, Marcella says, hi all, who is the guest today? Well, we've currently got ads with us and we did have George. Yeah. Uh, Anders the Viking says, just found your channel. Nice work. I used to sell on eBay, but now flip for store credit for video games and films. Ah, okay. Yeah, a lot of people do that. CEX, that sort of thing, maybe. Yeah. Um, Robzilla, what do you do with the parts that don't sell? You mark them down and still nothing. Well, the plan with this was, but it's taken me a lot longer than I first anticipated. I bought the job lot, which was, I don't know how many thousands of parts. The plan was to get everything listed, give it all at least six months to a year to try and sell through. And whatever's left, the plan is to do a job lot and hopefully sell to a, another trader or a parts dealer, whatever. Um, but I'm already in profit on everything by a massive margin. So... I'm going to still try and get it all listed and then maybe give it six months to sell through, have a big sale and then do a job lot. Will be the plan. Um, question, job lot of printer cartridges, good or bad buy? Depends what they are. Not all printed ink cartridges are worth a lot of money like As was just saying. Yeah, I mine were Brother and, oh, what was it, Epson. Epson, yeah, I've sold a few, I sold an Epson earlier, actually. Just one of those. You know, that some split it out into cyan, pink, and yellow and stuff. Yeah, yeah. I've been selling the individual ones, not for a lot, because they're not uh, a lot around, uh, about eight, eight or nine pounds each, I think. Oh, getting messages. Okay. Mm-mm, mm-mm. Have you ever thought of becoming a tat wholesaler for the rest of us? <laughs> That's it's not a plan I've thought about, no. Oh, they're saying half of it is brother. I assume we're talking yeah, we're talking about those inks. Yeah. Brother I mean, okay. Yeah, I mean it still depends on like the model number and stuff. So just don't necessarily think just because it's brother it's gonna be automatically worth a load of money, but you know, it's a good chance it is. Yeah. With a job lot, if it's a lot of money, it, I would always research ink. Yeah, yeah. That's what I did with mine. I researched all of them individually, you know, marked down what I could get um, back in terms of like sales against my cost and then worked out like a rough net profit and then thought, you know, is it doable? Is it something I'd like to do? And then I said, yeah, I would like to do it. So I went for it. Well, I actually put an offer in and then we accepted my offer. Nice. Um, right, we'll leave on what Anders is saying. Anders the Viking says, CEX is good for quick credit. My local Tesco had big sleeve Blu-rays for £3 each. I bought the stock and slowly got enough credit at £20 a time to buy a Chromebook, new camera, tablet, etc. Wow, that's fantastic. Yeah, I've done similar things uh, trading in at CEX. And um, what I've tended to do is trade in stuff that I can't get any more if I resold it. If CEX are giving a good pro- trade in price, which is near its resale value on eBay, I'll trade it in there and then buy stuff that I can sell for more on eBay, if you know what I mean. So trading in bog standard stuff that's not worth messing around with for stuff that will sell quick. Just a way of liquidating stuff, really. Oh, Sean says, it was ads I heard on YouTube first. I heard of Nick because of ads. What? Yes. I can't believe someone said that. My God. Yeah, it all comes around. <laughs> Fantastic. Right, I'm going to wrap this up and actually try and get some listing done at a pace of more than like one every half an hour. <laughs> I know. I'm um, just finishing my second one now. Fantastic. Yeah, we do normally, we're n- normally more efficient. Well, I can only I'm, I'm, re- I'm normally really good. I'm normally really good, but my God, chatting and listing, that really slows you down. Exactly. Well, I'll do another one of these. I might I might make it a regular feature. We'll see how uh, how popular they become. Um, thanks for joining me, Ads. It's been great to catch up. It's been a while. Yeah, it's been brilliant. And um, yeah, again, like I said with George, Ads has a channel, as Sean was just saying. Uh, if you search ADZ, robinson it will almost certainly come up on yeah it will do nowadays um but yeah i'll put the links below anyway if you're if you're not watching it live um yeah and we'll see you soon thanks for watching guys hope you enjoyed that <laughs> random uh, session we'll see you soon cheers <laughs>